All right, so our final example here, as I mentioned, is a little different. We're not just going to be validating data before it's inserted. We're actually going to uh, create new data based off of another action. So we're working with Instagram still, but the idea is that we want to keep track of when somebody unfollows somebody else. Right now, when a follow is deleted, when that entry is gone, it just disappears and we don't have a record of it, which is typical. That's how most databases work. But sometimes there's information that you would want to keep that you might want to store uh, so you could refer back to it later because it could be meaningful. So in a, in a site like Instagram, if there's you know a pattern to people unfollowing certain companies or other users and you can discern that pattern, uh, that's potentially really important to figure out you know, why people are unfollowing or when these mass unfollow events happen. Um, it's valuable information. So the idea is that rather than doing something before an insert, like we've been doing here, we're going to do something actually after a delete. So after a follows is deleted, we're going to insert a new row into a separate table that doesn't exist yet. So we're kind of going to uh, be transmitting it from one table to another. Now, you could argue there are other ways of doing this. Uh, you could, you know, instead of creating a new entry in a table, you could take the, the original follows table and have a status active or deactivated or following and unfollowed or something like that that you could toggle on and off. There, there are merits to that. There are merits to both sides. But because this is in the trigger section, it's a great example. And it's a really common application, uh, just logging information logging events that happen is probably the most common use for triggers. So hopping over here, what we need to do first is actually define a unfollows table. So we have our follows table. I'm just going to copy the entire thing and change it to unfollows. And we'll keep it as follower ID and followee ID. That's fine. Create it at everything else can stay the same. Now we have basically a duplicate table just called unfollows and it will start off empty. But then let's say, you know, someone with ID of five is following someone with ID of six and then they delete that or we delete it because they've unfollowed them. We would then take that and insert it into the unfollows table. The same order follower ID and followee ID are the same. Um, but then we have a time created at for when that event happened, when the unfollowing happened. So that's pretty much it. Now what we want to do is have it happen automatically whenever a follows is deleted. So first things first, I'm going to rerun this file. I'm dropping the database, creating it again, uh, using the database, and then creating all these tables, inserting all this data. You don't have to do that. If you just want to follow along, just run this code here. Okay, source ig.sql. Perfect. So we've got that new table. If we take a look, unfollows and it's empty. You'll just have to trust me on that. Um, so what we want to do now is actually create our new trigger. So we could do it in the same file. I'm going to do it in a separate file just so it's easier for you to see if you're going through my code here. So we'll call this the unfollows trigger. Perfect. And I'll go ahead and copy this starter code again and paste it in. So the trigger name, we could call it anything. Let's go with capture unfollow or something like that. And what we want to do is rather than doing it before something is deleted, we can do it afterwards because maybe there's a problem. Potentially something wouldn't be deleted. Um, I'm struggling with a good example, but but there could be some situation where the delete doesn't actually go through, in which case we don't want to create an unfollow. So we're going to do it after something is deleted. So after delete on the table name is follows. That's our follows table here. So when one of these is deleted immediately afterwards, our code goes in here. And all that we want to do is insert into the unfollows table, just like this, insert into unfollows. Then we'll have follower ID and followee ID. There we go. And then our values. 
And the question is, what are those values? Just like before where we had new.followerID and new.followerID corresponding to the new row that's going to be inserted. When something has been deleted, we have access to old.followerID, comma, old.followerID, just like that. So this works on its own, um, but I'm actually going to show you another syntax that I like for this situation, which is using set. So the set syntax is another way of inserting something. Actually, we'll just go to my solution to show you. It looks like this. Insert into unfollows, and then we have set follower ID equals old.followerID, ID, comma, followee ID equals old.followee ID. So it's really up to you what you prefer, but I just wanted to show this syntax. There we go. Just like that. So essentially all you're doing is using an equal sign to assign them rather than values, parentheses, um, you know, that old syntax that we're used to. So I'm just going to mix it up here. But to be clear, you absolutely can use the other example as well, the typical insert. So we don't need an error message or anything here because this isn't a validation. We're not responding with something. We're not preventing something from happening. All that we're doing is connecting these two tables so that when something is deleted from follows, um, something, an analog is created in unfollows, which as I said, is a pretty common situation, not follows and unfollows necessarily, but capturing kind of metadata um, or capturing other information based off of SQL happenings, if you will. So events, things changing, being deleted, updating, that you're then capturing and logging somewhere else so that you can refer back to it. So you, you usually don't just do this willy-nilly. Typically, there's a reason you want to store that information. Otherwise, it can kind of, it can get bloated very quickly, especially if you have a lot of triggers going on. I'm actually going to spend a couple seconds at the end of this section uh, with some advice about when to use triggers and when not to use them and how they can get out of hand. But for now, this is perfect. So let's save it, make sure we don't have any syntax issues, and let's see what happens. So we'll do source unfollow trigger.sql is the name of the file. Looks like it worked. So let's verify right now. Select star from unfollows. Nothing there. Let's do a select star from follows. And let's limit it to five. If I can spell that correctly, select Okay, so what we're going to do is say that follower ID two unfollows person with follow or person person with ID of one. So we're going to delete this right here. So let's do it now. We'll do a delete from follows where follower ID equals two, and we could just leave it at that. And now we delete all of these that have follower ID of two. Um, so we'll do and follow e id equals one. I need that d there. There we go. Okay. So it should be gone if we select it. Now it's gone from there. And if we looked at unfollows, there we go. We now have follower id two, follow e id one. So just to show you that one more time, let's go ahead and delete all follows where follower ID is three. So that should be quite a few, 99. And now if I look at all unfollows, we have 99 new entries. So pretty cool, uh, very easy way to kind of transfer that data over into another form. And you're not always uh, strictly duplicating data like this. Um, sometimes you're summing data together. So when something is inserted or deleted, maybe you're keeping a tally in another table somewhere. Maybe you're keeping a total, like if you have a shopping cart, um, you have a cart table and then you have, you know, uh, your items or your, uh, products table. And anytime a product is entered into a cart, anytime a new product is created, you're going to update the total and you could do that using a trigger as well. So it's not just copying exact data like we're doing here from followers or follows and transmitting it identically into unfollows. But that's a, a simple example that makes sense in the context of our Instagram data.
So that wraps up kind of what I want to do with triggers. Hopefully you see some of the possibilities around them. Um, the next video is going to be pretty quick, just talking about how you can delete triggers, how you can view your triggers, kind of managing them. And then we'll also talk a little bit about um, kind of a warning around triggers. So I'll see you then.